Oh, bristle? I okay, now you don't want a crystal maiden. <laughs> it's it's, yeah, a, it's, it's a very bit. dangerous world for a CM in uh, up against this lineup. I mean, if you want to go into the reactive type of picking, you can always pick the uh, Shadow Demon, as the Purge is very good against both the Racer and Bristleback. Wait, more, more so the Bristleback. You mentioned the Skywrath Mage before for Invictus Gaming, but Team Secret looks like even better for them right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mentioned that uh, Invictus Gaming would not want the, the Skywrath as the yeah. Mother would have yep. made it. But yeah, definitely uh, Skywrath is a possible hero here. Very nice to deal with the Bristleback. But I, I don't know. I'm thinking if they want to go into, you know, we talked earlier about the jungle. If any team is going to go and have a jungle player, it would lead to the eyes of Puppy. But I doubt it's actually that strong currently. Yeah. Playing the Chen or Enchantress. With, with with their current draft, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to do no. it because you're already going to get your push coming out from your brood mother, and you want something which can help force the laner at least ensure the off lane of Invictus Gaming don't really get anything. Well, you already have your push from brood mother, but it's not really that extreme push. But if you add a Chen or something, you could have a very strong pushing train and just go from lane to lane. Plus, mm -hmm. it gives that heal sustainability that we talked about. They don't really have it on anyone apart from the brood mother and her ulti, so it's an option. Other than that, they could play something straight up. Uh, it's actually hard to counter draft in Victor's Gaming's uh, lineup. They have a lot of. Well, tools. actually, do go for the CM. Yeah. It's it's still doable even against the Bristleback. It's just that if they run in on her and start hitting her, of course she will die. Yeah. But then Puppy will trust that his team takes care of him. The the other th the other aspect I was looking at was what would happen with the Bounty Hunter if he stalked the Crystal Maiden through the Renegade Jungle. Yeah. Because with uh, a couple of clarities, the CM can farm up inside the jungle. Just easy frostbite farm. Yeah. You can come out level four about four minutes. I in. mean, Puppy is, I believe, probably still the player with the highest net worth uh, Crystal Maiden in competitive games. Yeah, I, I'm not sure on that stat, so don't quote me. But I saw a crazy game with some 20 minute heart and stuff. Um, I remember that game. Yeah. So uh, he he definitely knows how to jungle the Crystal Maiden, but with a bounty hunter, as you said, it can definitely pester you. Oh, the sister. Gets drafted. It's fire and ice. Invictus Gaming in secret. Only one can prevail. <laughs> oh, they both kill each other. <laughs> and we end up with a draw. That's also a possibility. As it is secret, one game up at the moment. Invictus Gaming, it's... With oh, Alina pick up as the last one. Like, there, there's no real setup for her. There's a couple of slows for her to work with. Yeah, really. There's not a single reliable stun. There's only the, you know, stun... The mini stun on the shuriken. Mm -hmm. So, of course, if Bristleback gets a lot of slow on someone or Shadow Strike or Jinada, you can land a stun, but it's not that easy with Lina. Yeah. But, but it's nice to have that pure damage up against someone like a Viper, and she knows she can pop the Crystal Maiden in a very short space of time. Especially yeah, since it's a support Lina, like uh, it makes it weird to see because she's not gonna have a lot of items, so it will be difficult. If you're mid, at least you will have an early Yules, making it a little bit easier. To to land your stunts on your own. But you will be able to also, like with Life Strike Array, clean up a couple of trees and you can stack a lot easier yeah. if, if you're also the leaner. So that's another option for them. There are Prepare things going for you. For yeah, so nice options from both teams for the draft as now we'll get ourselves underway. So welcome again to all the viewers on the mainstream and thanks for joining us again and selecting this audio channel for your viewing pleasure or audio pleasure uh, here for our game number two of Team Secret versus Invictus Gaming. It is the second Second round of the groups, day one. I'm Wagamama, and this is Toby One Let's go. Hi. Uh, <laughs> the high started, and then, <laughs> then he looks over. All right, damn you, Waga! <laughs> Such a troll. Such a troll. Uh, yes, uh, I'm a Valve boy. Oh, did he get spotted? Uh, when yeah, he did that? They, yeah, they saw Faith, him quickly. Yeah, Faith was just barely spotted, so I think they're gonna deward that. Very deep one on the high ground too for. On the radiant side, but do they, there's one sentry warden, the viper. Yeah, he has the sentry and the observer, so they know where the observer went down. He's got to go there and deward this right now, I believe. Like, Does he pinging. place it closer to the lane as well? Hmm. He might be worried. It's like in this like random spot, a little bit further. Yeah, up on the he's hill. not entirely sure where it is, but I mean, I don't know. Maybe like, he didn't like, actually realize the bounty warden there, but he definitely saw the the bounty run away. So maybe he thought it was a mind game or something. The, the secondary sentry is also on Zai, so yeah. in case they put a sentry in his lane. Arteezy gonna run away here on bottom as he has no way of stealing this rune. Mm -hmm. Ferrari gonna get it. S4 takes the one for the mid. So everything going as foreseen. 
Oh, already dust on uh, Spirit Breaker, by the way. So if you want to try cheeky business in the beginning of the game here as a bounty hunter, be prepared to get punished by Spirit Breaker. SP might be a little bit sad, though, because uh, he can't do the pull. So he won't be able to have Bash from the <laughs> first one. He'll only be able to get charged. Puppy, the puppy courier service on the mid lane. <laughs> he's actually uh, delivering, running out with the funny, funny thing is, he's here, but S4 is not ready to take it. He's like, ah, oh, just take some damage of Ferrari. Well, it starts off to start. Actually, he goes with a static clean, but takes a lot of damage for his trouble. That's uh, not worth it at all for Ferrari. I mean, he stole plenty of damage making. Oh, Sentry Ward's faith so quick. Yeah, the tangle. Yep, that's the only way he would be able to get rid of both the Observer and the Sentry Ward. He got both of them in that short space that was of a time. Big play. That was a big play. He also has his ward remaining on mid lane, so very good, winning the mid ward war. And uh, now he's going to make his way down to bottom, where there's no pull available, but he's going to try and uh, find a chance on Arteezy. The only issue he's got is the fact that he's basically out of mana. Like, you might have a sentry ward available, but he's just used his uh, oh. last clarity. They charge on Chorn, but it's Arteezy initiated on burning. It's a good start. The flat can have the damage. Kuro should be able to get the uh, revenge kill over on the leader, which is nice for his levels. Unfortunately for him, though, he lost his core. Yeah, lost your core there, and the first blood as well, as Arteezy gets brought down first. Very nice timing there by Devante Hunter to get all the way down there after dewarding. Already having good impact. In top lane, we haven't talked about it much. It's just Bristleback leaning up against the Brute Mother. Yeah, no one should really die on this top lane. No, it's not lane. I mean, sooner or later, we're going to expect the Brute Mother to take over the jungle and farm. Actually, Luo is going pretty aggressive here and just spamming. So I can't farm under his own tower here. This is very nice. Nice play by Luo. But you, you're still going to be able to web and you got Salve and everything else, so it's not going to be much of a problem for him. Yeah, sooner or later, he's going to be able to farm. It's just the cool spray spam is very, very real. Yeah, not to mention the regeneration. It's nice having that little mango on the Brussels bank. So if times do get tough, he can just get that quick 150 mana back again. I never knew I loved mangoes until, until I played Dota. I'm like, do I like mangoes? Never tried. I would love a mango right now. Uh, need some mana. I have a little restaurant close to my home. They give mangoes? mangoes? No, they give mangoes when you buy something. Always a mango. That's an amazing restaurant. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's the Swedish healthy living right there. So good. Oh, they're going lane. again. Yep, there's a charge in Chuan actually knocking back both burning and faith, but that's easy. Once again, so much focus damage when they go on him, and Chuan's still not dead. Where's that 17%? Oh, yes, Kuro can't find the last record rate will be off target. There goes your dust. They see Faith and Puppy turns for the frostbite, but Faith not taking enough damage to find a kill here. And Spirit Breaker, not enough mana or life to re-engage in. Yeah, very good, but the queen didn't aggressively blink there as well as Arteezy was respawning and TPing in, so. Well played by IG. They're really doing well on this uh, on this aggressive lane with the Queen of Pain, playing well around it, and Faith once again being part of kills. Uh, two deaths to Arteezy. Two deaths. Yeah, that's a terrible start for him. And we saw a game earlier where the the gyrocopter, if it gets a hard start, it's pretty tough to recover as a gyrocopter compared to some other. Um, like Shadow, Fiend, other heroes that we think are so easy always to recover. They want to have a little bit of crack here at S4. Faith pinged it out. He's got Janadra off cooldown. Yeah, no um, HP though. Yeah, not a lot, but I thought it was just going to be enough of a setup when uh, Razor would combine, but his static link was on cooldown, hence no movement forward. Yeah, everything. Bottom lane is still very aggressive here and They're charging the top. The SP, SP's charge. coming over for Luo. Now, Luo's got the highest CS on the board. Now, this is a little bit... Uh, Luo is a tough kill. Yeah. Like, he's taking a lot of spy links, but he's still got 300 net worth advantage There's over, no way. over Zai. So they might be able to charge him indirectly. They You've actually, got three levels full no spy links, but there's no mana for it. So a long run up, but no real reward. Yeah, I was thinking, like, that's a very tanky hero. He has two points in Bristleback, and he has the poor man shield. And then he has a magic wand on top of that. So if you spam spells near him, he's going to have that available as well. Mid now, an attempt here. DD, Queen of Pain behind this. He's only got one point up in Scream, however, so it's going to have to be all physical damage. And you got the SP ready to charge in to help him out. In fact, yep, there it comes on Burning. Off, He's going to pump back Ferrari, close the plasma field. Not enough damage to kill off S4, but actually, I take it Puffy. off back. With the attack, it's not. That's 129, uh, 126 oh, damage of stolen. And Puppy, he knows he's in the trees. Puzzle oh fields God. in two seconds. He'll run in with a frostbite. Puppy's looking for revenge. Kuro's gonna come in. This is not worth it for Ferrari. Fates in the neighborhood, but the bash from Kuro, not even a bash, just a normal hit. Yeah. Finds the pickoff. He just hits really strong, honestly, and he brings down the solo kill onto the Razor. 500 gold for the Spirit Breaker there, or 489. Very good start for him.
I mean, he's 2-0-0, so despite the fact that the bottom fights have been going poorly, mm -hmm. at the very least, at, you know, the cost of Arteezy, the Spirit Breaker is doing doing well. And the Spirit Breaker is one of those heroes where you really, like, you could do some Arcoria. Yeah. Edgy worked it out as uh, Zai starts to creep skip. It's... Yeah, you're gonna do this always as Brutma. Just take over behind the tower and then run in and farm the entire jungle. You can get so much farm going. Kuro's been forced to burn through a lot of mana. Now he doesn't have a lot of regeneration on him, but he'll have passive regeneration. Now he's finished the urn. <laughs> yeah, the urn is, is so amazing as well. When you have that, you just want to have one aggressive charge available always and use the second one to heal yourself after you take your fight. Mm -hmm. And these wards by IG are so good. I haven't really stopped to mention that, but they see everything that's going on really right now. They see Poppy and his jungling. They see Arteezy, and hence they're on him already. There's Nargo. Live so hard with burning with a blink in. Phase out web taking a huge amount of damage. He's still visible because of the charge. Oh, Spirit Breaker wants Breaker. that. Uh, oh, they sell him. No, it, the bottom. He can't, he can't get it. Kuro yeah. knows it. Uh, they heal him up. Very nice there. Man, vision is, is like half the game when it comes to Dota. Knowing where your enemy are makes it so much more easier to make good decision making. I love how Puppy's actually got like the fourth most pro games on it. That's because he was playing it from the very start of Dota 2. Ferrari now to charge in Koro. 17% works for him, and they got more support with the Rocket Barrage. Puppy is the man who takes the last hit. And yeah. rightly so, because that Crystal Mage is completely naked of items. Yeah, actually has nothing. It's like watching a courier. Well, this Spirit Breaker is bringing a lot of damage to every time they go on someone, because he's already level 5, and when he has level 6, he's going to bring even more with their ulti. I'm going to keep my eyes still on top this top lane. I know we said there was going to be no kills here, but mm. Broodmother's found just as much farm as this Bristleback. Yep. So the Bristleback's going to be really tanky, but what does the Broodmother do? You've got almost 1,600 gold on a Broodmother. Is this a Necro Fire's book game because you're going up against a hero like a Bristleback? Or do you think Orchid? Like, what's the goal here? I think this is definitely a good Necro book game, especially as there's the Bounty Hunter as well, because he's going to be looking for you when you're the Broodmother. True. So just popping your Necro book and clearing of wards, and then maybe you can find a kill on the Bounty Hunter as well. And it does add um, an amazing push, and Necros are just pretty strong in general. Well, right now he's just got Treads as well as Sol Ring. Yeah, we'll see where it wants to go in. I don't believe it's a Dagon game, really, when you're against these heroes. Maybe against Alina, you can keep feeding on her, of course. He's looking to go mid and kill her. Yep, coming right for Chuan. Okay, well that's one easy way to get an easy pick off. And the SB doesn't actually finish the charge, but they chase after Ferrari. Zai is right behind him. There's no points up in Bite or Insatiable Hunger. So they don't have support like this, but they can just try and force the T1 Towers. This feels like a like a play of game one again. You feel a little bit behind, and then the T1 Towers of IG just start falling apart for no trade. Yeah, definitely. And Kuro gets spotted out here, but can they do much? The TP and the Bristleback, the strongest hero, getting him to a front. Burning, chasing after Kuroki, but he's gonna charge away. Yeah, down to the bottom lane. You might get the Shadow Strike, but you've managed to drag all five players from IG to the mid. And you've still got the Broodmother having great fun on top. And now the Spirit Break is going to find more space on bot lane too. The thing is that the Broodmother moves so quickly from lane to lane as well. Because she just runs in mid and then all the way back up to top quickly and easily. Whereas IG, they cheap it in mid to defend there. They, they bring everyone, as you say. And uh, that gives Brood more space to farm. You actually look at the line of webs. <laughs> Yeah. It's this, it's this perfect little chain line. And with the new mechanics, she can easily remove the webs that she used to get there yep. and keep the ones that she wants instead of just automatically removing the oldest one, which was terrible. That's the way it used to be. Well, hello, Ferrari. That's a lot of spiders around you. And, uh, well, the attacks will begin. Static Link's going to be there, but all Zai's got to do is just run himself away. I mean, he's pestering him, right? It's just so frustrating for Ferrari right now. They drop sentry wards. Oh, they see Zai, but Chuan doesn't have an ultimate. And Faith doesn't have track. So he's keeping three players focused on him while S4 was able to dish some damage to the mid. Yeah, it's all about that space that he's bringing to him. Doing a really good job with that. Solid off lane and rewarded by having the highest net worth. But the next three net worths still oh, belong to IG. Bottom. Are they actually? <laughs> Almost. Here in the nether, nether strike over burning with the blink away. Yeah, if he got the nether strike on him after the blink, that could actually have been a kill. Or if he just 17%ed that a little bit, but he uh, didn't have time to cast Ulti. Oh, hello, Luo. Yeah. Zai's keeping his army of Spidlings separate. Doesn't want to get them all cool sprayed up. There's a lot of stacks as well being prepared for IG once again. So that's a quad stack of Ancients. 
but there's also stacks inside the Radiant Jungle as now Kuro having a crack at Chuan, but slow down Sonic Wave. He doesn't have life to survive this. They have 1,300 <laughs> life to get through, and they're able to do so. Yeah, Faith comes in there, and he's throwing that out. And Ned, actually, a little bit of a fight and a TP out attempt. Uh, not wow. with Zai coming in. So many spiders. Gets brought down by them. And this means the tier one tower oh, is God. lost too. They actually mopping up, actually can't kill the spider links. So the spiders will finish the tower. The TP will now come in from the Bristle back. So one more spray, he'll get a crap ton of money. Uh, but at the same time, Frost bitten up and you've still got Zai in the front lines. He is and now realizing tracked. <laughs> so this is causing some problems for him. I mean, he's still very fast. He can just run straight back. Lewis. Lewis is like, hmm, I wonder if there's anyone in the world who can fight me right now. He's just running he across the map tower. looking for someone who can attack. face off against this Vanguard, Basilius, we're still back. Who's actually building the mech for them? I'm assuming it's going to be Faith at some point. Um, yeah, Radiance maybe. Because Bristleback got the Vanguard. I mean, it's very popular in general to buy a mech on Bounty Hunter as of late. And just going for mech and mana boots. Mm -hmm. it's, and then it's a at some later point. Yeah, yeah. Slash's way, Guardian Grief Rush. It's actually very effective. I played against a lot of uh, Bounty Hunters, tried the build. It's not bad at all. But at some point, you want to have Medallion or Solar Quest more than you want to have the Guardian Greaves. And I uh, think it's not always the best choice. So, Broodmother still farming the enemy jungle. Can't do much against the Bristleback. Uh, just just chilling and relaxing a little bit further out. Just keep finding the money. Like you got so much of it on the map. There's so many neutral camps that you can just take out. And when you're ready, have a crack. And he's going to go for a Yasha. So it looks like a... A more of an SMY or possibly just a mana star build to break free of the track. And with Sentry Wars down for the Radiant oh, side, that's a nice... Faith is destroyed so quickly. Yeah, that's a nice Sentry to have there for the Broodmother, so he can actually get that pick off. And uh, the rest Rory. of Secrets moving up, like IG's in position. They're going to find Luo. A quick charge up to do the work side, starting his oh, TP, God. and that's a lot of damage. Yeah, uh, he's. He doesn't have any uh, <laughs> anyone to hear his. Meanwhile, storm. on the bottom, though, S Force pushing. He was waiting for Burning to be a little bit more aggressive. Now, Burning moves all the way up to the secret shop, and Kuro doesn't give up on the charge. He just wants to say to Burning, remember, I be I actually belong here. Oh, yeah, she got the 17%, but with Chuan uh, TPing in, how much damage has he got? And he's got the bash, won't find it. The Plaza Field will come in. Like Burning the... will survive. Oh, they're chasing Arteezy as well. He's tracked up, and they're really fast chasing after him. Do not he's up. got call down, though. He's Chinata got called attacks. down into a rocket barrage in a moment with S4 around the corner. Fate's going to be low. The Chinata will bounce around, but they're just so high in life. The mech is still here from S4 too. He'll trigger it out and then start his TP. RTZ won't be so lucky. The Sonic Wave will help to get the kill. And IG moved everyone from top down to bottom. Yeah, that's an important track kill as well. But of course, Broodmother will be looking to take a take a tower and trade there. But getting track kills and just taking this action is what IG wants. So a little bit too aggressive by Kuroki there, diving so deep. Can't blame him for believing though. I mean, we saw yesterday, paid off, paid dividends for the Spirit Breaker to just charge in. Yeah. And it could have worked. Like, if Chuan didn't TP in as quick as he did and had level six when he did, then that probably would have been successful for the Spirit Breaker and 100% worth it. It was a pretty risky play, but... Here comes the charge nice again. Down the middle, this time he's going in for Chuan, looking for some sweet, sweet revenge. No Nether Strike available. Back try and slow him down, can't find one. The call down will connect, slowing down Chuan. But Ferrari's taking 105 points of damage here, yes, and it's still starting damage. to tick up. And with Luo on the front lines, Puppy just has to let it go. One more attack, the bash, pushing him back. Puppy almost gets a full duration. Ferrari, he's gonna drop his erase of secret. They've already arrived, burning the soul survivor once again, and they scouted out the ancients. Yeah, and Broom Brothers is starting to like, hey, yeah, Ancients, and he's very smartly targeting down the mother dragons first as they kill the babies. The splash damage of the dragons, but this is very hard for him to steal alone. He's gonna get the help of Jarocopter. Amazing fight there, bringing in the brute mother behind the enemy lines as well. It was really big for him. And yes, Razor stole a lot of damage, but who did he steal it from? He did not steal it from the important heroes. He stole it from the Spirit Breaker. And who did he inflict it on? Like he hit Crystal Maiden twice and still couldn't kill her before almost the entire duration ulti went. Exactly, what we were talking about, right? That puppy, he will shout his ulti and he's like, yeah, you guys can kill me, but my team will take care of you. He found the perfect tree position. Yeah. No vision available for IG. He did. Is the charge going on Faith at the moment? 
That's a long charge back from home, but Arteezy starts the call down once again. He will be popped, but look at Zai. He takes out Chorn. They move down to Faith, and then pushing, oh, burning back. No that. blink available for him. And it's just three for one trade off. Arteezy, he's almost playing this gyro like he used to play the Drow Ranger. Yeah, pretty much, actually. It's very similar. And uh, I like this way that Zai is playing his brood mother. He's 6 0 oh, 1. He's like taking part of as many fights as he can, just getting in there because. He's hard to deal with. He's also rushing Manta style to get rid of the track. Already from finished. 15 minute Manta. Exactly. Very quick Manta style there. So really, really nice for him. And they keep winning these fights. A lot of it is attributed to the Brute Mother. Mm -hmm. well, she's always there at the right time. And man, it, all, it actually kind of like gives me also flashbacks to the way that uh, Ichi, I can know that's actually when uh, TZ was playing his Throw Ranger in the mid, but the way like Samel gets killed, and then you're like, ah, oh, yeah, we're winning right now. Then you realize, oh, wait, there's two other cores in this game that are doing some he heavy, heavy lifting. Exactly. And you've already got a, you get a Viper with a mech, uh, treads and Ring of Aquila 15 minutes in, and can buy the point booster as well. So the Ax is, is rapidly approaching, and the highest net worth is 8.4k on a Broodmother. Yeah, and as you said, the Aghanims will be amazing in this game as well, because against a Viper, against or against a Razor, against a Bristleback, putting that ulti on them, slowing them down so much, is really, really good. Two smokes now going in, and they actually the smoke into each other. Him. The fate's gonna break him. He's actually in this the moment, but then the dust with the Frostbite. You might have your track going, but they just instantly pick off the Bounty Hunter and retreat back out again in Victus Gaming. Now, Luo is visible underneath the Radiant Observer Ward, but really, Secret don't care that much. They're here for the T1 tower on bot lane. Yeah, Secret, I mean, not the biggest pick off to find a Bounty Hunter there, but they just, they'll take it. I mean, yep. both teams use the smoke and they get a kill out of it and nothing really? else happens. They're going to be able to maybe pressure this tower bottom, meanwhile, having a Brute Mother on top. Yeah, this and that's probably like the more critical point of, this, of the statement. In fact, you've got pressure on the bottom lane for the tier one tower. Ig, if you rotate too many people down here to deal with this, the brood just takes your top tower. Yeah, and then who have you got that can still battle directly against the brood mother? They don't have anyone that can really solo against the brood mother at this point. I, I think mean, S Force realized that he went a hand of Midas 17 minutes in. That's fine, actually. On Viper, this is one of the heroes that you can go for a later Midas, just so that you stay relevant because you have your mech, that's very crucial, getting that up nice and early so you can win the team fights. But after that, it's really only about building attack speed and farming tools. So Yasha is normally the item, but Midas works just as fine. Mm -hmm. yeah, Faith is in a very, very tight position. He's between two different sentry the wards of the inside. Yeah, they, they would love it. He sees them. Like, look, it's so awkward. Uh, he knows. Looking he's... to the left, they have a observer ward. <laughs> he's got two sense knobs of, of himself, and yeah, that observer ward to seeing all. But the Radiant Observer Ward from Secret in the lane also sees just as much. They throw it on the Sentry Ward, but it's too far away. So the charge begins, and Faith hangs around a little bit too long. Kuro doesn't commit, however. He'll get tracked up, and then they just hold back. Yeah, he's just gonna back off. Meanwhile, there's a big Brood Army on the top lane as well. So if they can just mount some pressure on bottom, Viper finding a DD rune here on top lane as well is very nice for him. I actually can't believe no one made a Spiderling plushie for the TI store. <laughs> Just came to mind. Like, we got a little puck head, but where where are my little broodlings? Do you want to rest your head on this spider? I think you would, man. Especially when it looks that cute. I haven't actually seen it, so I'm not gonna judge. Looks nice. Alright. But yeah, Zai is just taking all the farm out from my G2. So even if you want to pop over, like, you're looking at burning. There's another Queen of Pain trying to rush a Scythe of Ice, but you're not gonna find your last 2700 without putting yourself I mean, at high, high risk. I mean, S4 had his by now. Just, just saying. <laughs> S4 also had possibly the fantastic, like the greatest <laughs> art of ever, where this Queen of Pain is 117. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's different games. Uh, Faith sees the Sentry Ward. He wants to get rid of this. That is actually a very interesting stat. Average freezing field damage per player normally is around 1490, whereas Puppy more than doubles that in his average game. That is pretty cool. That might also be because of the people he plays with. I mean, like, you know, I don't want to care about the Crystal Maiden. I want to care about everyone else that's trying to kill me. Yeah, it, it could definitely be so. Uh, other than him, I would also say that Ake is one of the players that understand how to position your Crystal Maiden so that you get really, really high value out of the freezing field. Because mm -hmm. it's all about, as you said last fight, hiding between the trees, trying to put yourself where you're not in vision, and starting off the ulti. People will just realize, oh, wait, I'm dying. Where is that, where is that frosty bitch? Zai. 
Faith's right behind him, so at least that'll reveal it, but they, yeah, they've got no way to kill him. Like, even even if they try. Yeah, it's too hard. Since he has the Manta style available at mm -hmm. all times as well, he can always just remove the track or Yep, he's going whatever. for Ferrari. That's a big, big spidling army right behind him. Starts off with the insane full hunger, and Ferrari just so low. The spies are chasing down a little bit further, but they move back over to Chuan. Sai, gonna get himself a little bit further away, but then again, <laughs> he's gonna kill Ferrari one second and spawn spidlings. He oh just wants God. to regen, so hide in the tree lines. Ferrari will TP himself out to safety. And now Zai, with a little bit of time, he can actually kill off Chuan when Chuan retreats. <laughs> this is actually hilarious. He would probably have killed him, actually, if he just held on to his spawn spidling a little bit longer. Because because it's a razor, there goes the you get perched. And yeah, now Zai... Him? No, uh, no, he's still on the other side of the tree line. He doesn't have vision there. Yeah. But bottom lane, they have vision there. Charge coming on burning so they can keep the vision when he blinks away. And uh, that means you can get range of the frostbite, frostbite from Poppy, and that'll cancel the TP out. Burning, dead to the world. Uh, that, that was a nice pickoff for them as well. The kill going the way of S4, who started to build up his Aghanims, and he's already halfway there. This Midas working out pretty well for him as he's looking very good on his item crest mid now. As Ferrari being charged, Zai with the mana start triggering out. And he static linked one of the illusions, but Puppy with the ulti going to go to work. Ferrari and actually now moved down to throw Faith, and that's where your dust will trigger. And this is secret. The snowball has begun, and Tusker was even banned. Yeah, this is really looking. Looking pretty grim already. Just the control that Zai has on this game, because no one can go up against him. No one can touch him. Yep. He has 4,000 4, gold after his Manta style. Now we can see that Necro book. Yeah, and Roshan could be a very easy pick here. Necro into Zulkiras would be a pretty pretty normal build for a Manta style, but he's going to go for Radiance. Wait, what? This is nice. Or Abyssal Blade. You know, it's possible, but... When you have Manta style, why not go for Radiance? Yeah, Radiance makes sense when you're just going to make life a living hell for... Like, Chuan will have no presence in this game. Uh, and be... Yeah. If you wanted to go Abyssal, I think you go Basher first anyway. Like, YG. They're coming into contest for Roshan, but Roshan already dead before he starts. Call down. Luo, well, well far out of position. And they're getting on multiple sides. We can't just keep his back turned on the entire time. Sonic Wave will fly. Even a double damage rune. Arteezy bolts it up. He'll actually lose the Aegis to the Immortal. But he kept the DD. He did keep the DD. Oh, Spirit Breaker keeping, keeping up here. Chasing after Burning. Almost getting him. 17, no. No, no chance for the 17%. But he can stay on the back of Faith. But he does have Dust available. So the second Faith goes Invis, he <laughs> can trigger that. But the distance, charge, he needs vision again, and he lost it. Yeah. Faith actually able to have time on his side they this know, time. They know roughly where he is. He's going to try the YOLO dust, but it does not hit him. Right. And uh, he's probably going to run away from Maybe here. time to put a gem on the Viper. It could be. Oh, the Courier's coming in here. Does he see it? He sees it now. He's got turn. Radiant's he goes for it. He got it. Got him. Sanji Asha was delivered at least to the Gyrocopter, but they don't have enough vision against this, uh, this Bounty Hunter. So... Faith, doing a lot of work here. Is there a sentry? There's a sentry on the other side of the river. Yeah. With that sip. And Puppy, he's going to try and stack now, and he might think he's just screwed it up, but there's an observer wall that's blocking up that ancient pole. Oh, yeah. So he, he get Actually, no, it doesn't. Oh, what? It doesn't that block. It's too far to the oh, west. Oh, yeah. If you place it a little bit to the right, it will actually block. It's misplaced slightly. Yeah. That's a very good sentry ward spot, then. Dyer's top tower is if you want to deward the ancients, that's exactly what you want to put a sentry on, but not the uh, if you want to block the ancients. <laughs> no. Yeah, oh that. god, he found a DD when he was to clear the Ancients, that's perfect. Yep. Oh yeah, he had it sent before. Yep, that was Activated. the one he took, he, uh, to the... Oh, hello, Faith, Chuan, everyone, they're coming in. They go on Arteezy, quick call down, he doesn't even get it off, tries to bottle charge first though. And uh, that's gonna be a good track kill, into Puppy, the ulti goes out from him. He managed to get and return the kill on the Bounty Hunter. But meanwhile in Rome, Zai is taking out the Tier 2 Tower, continuing his push, bought his Radiance. Not finished on him yet. Yeah. But bought it. Yeah, he does have it. And... They have to come they back. Have, they have bought a new courier. Bought a walking courier, and it's gonna deliver the Aghanims to S4. He can't wait for that old courier to respawn. Time for a new one. It's a cheapie. Yeah. It's just a temporary thing. Shout out to all the Pinoys. Love them. Pinoy Dota? That's the, that's the strap, man. Dude, the, I, I double had Double like courier strap. Three bottles and five couriers. Just slingshotting all that. That's the meta. All right, so we get a Vladimir's offering completed up for Spirit Breaker as well. So the high ground push is becoming more and more real for Secret. If Zai does, I think, 
does he still go necro like you, when you've got a when you're gonna get a radiance like this you I'm, almost feel like it should be a full I, hunt and control i think you go for uh sock your ass still after this or bkb bkb would probably be the most uh smart and disciplined choice and a sock your ass is the greedy choice curry has got turned around though oh well, they saw him but they can't really bring him down. They don't have the stuns. Yep. <laughs> Looking at all these four heroes, they don't have stun. They only have a support Lina who's not there. She also she also doesn't have anything else than brown boots. It's also not a guaranteed hit. Yeah. Like you can still manage to dodge that. Yeah, exactly. She doesn't have a Yule Scepter, doesn't have items, so it's very difficult for her. So the Reigns is finally on Zai himself. Yeah. He's gonna be more frustrating now and also makes it annoying for the bounty hunter to stalk him now. He's just gonna take the burning damage. It looks like Secret are getting ready to finish this. The, the side of the Vias is finished over on the Queen of Pain, but this is a 25 minute scythe and that's all she really has. And the rest of Secret are ready to push. Manta, Medallions, Radiances, Mechs, Aghanim, Scepters, Vladimir's with Urns, Gyrocopter with an SMY plus an extra Ogre Club, and they found an opening. They found Faith. Just a quick charge him. Uh, he turned very four quick spider death. babies. He's gonna push now. He joined the winning team, dude. Does he have buyback? Uh, he's got buyback and two gold. Yeah, he's a bounty hunter though, and he really needs to not buy back. He's 300 gold away from the mech. And At the same time, IG need to see what's going on, and with that track, that's very uh, difficult. Just plasma field and dragon slave that. There's no need to buy back. So hold on to it. Attack. Tier two mid though can be hard to defend when the creeps get there, but it still has back to region. So and bottom. Bottom's exactly. pushing in by just the basic creep wave. Zai, burning, jumps in for the hex. They start the static link and Ferrari, a decent commitment, but now the call down with the Viper Strike. Ferrari's gonna take it all, including the Rocket Barrage, down for the count. Lua too far up, and Puffy just walking forward. They're looking for extra ulties, in fact, hitting everything. It all and oh melts. my, not even melting, man. Their Tootsies are frozen. IG. It is double the kill count the way of Secret and an invitation to enter the base of IG. Yeah, and that's a pretty nice invitation. It's nice and clean, nice and aim empty, a lot of space in there. Wow, they just brought them all down. They can't stop this Broodmother at all. And I like the fact that Arkeezy, despite not having items, he just charged in as though he did. He's like, yeah, I'll, I'll probably live, and he just charges in. And he would die very quickly if Lina got to cast her ulti, if everyone just synchronized. Yeah. But there was no chance. Spirit Breaker was charging in. It came it came so quickly. Everything. Like that that fight was over in like if you had like a countdown clock on it, I would be surprised if you even hit two seconds. Yeah, that was before a fast I, fight. From the initial damage to IG to when they were all dead. Yeah, that was extremely fast. And that was two lanes of racks, and of course they're not gonna stop there. They're gonna keep going bottom. Roshan has still some time until he can even be up. They're just gonna go, I think. Well, easy tier two. Oh, he's burning. They're coming out to fight. Like, Look at the it. two couriers delivering items. <laughs> <laughs> They're just so busy. When you're so rich, you have two couriers just flying out BKBs. One BKB to Arteezy, and the other BKB goes to Puffy. You get a BKB. <laughs> Check under your seat at home. Everyone's got a BKB. God. He almost has a Scotty on Broodmother now. What a disgusting, disgusting creature. It's, uh, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And, uh, uh, and it's, it's not just just, man. Like, it's, it's fully done. Oh, he actually has it now? Yep. Nice. So, Secret have more life on the Broodmother than you have on the Razor and the Bristleback. Yeah. And then you also get a Lotus Orb over on the Spirit Breaker. Oh, and that's good in this game. It's very good, because you can remove track with it. If you put it first, you can also get the bounty to track himself. Of course, returning Shadow Track, Laguna Blade, what have you. A lot of good stuff. What did Kuro just charge to then? He charged and then it just stopped. I'm assuming he hit the Creep Wave and not a hero. Uh, what? You mean if you if you put Lotus Orb and someone charges? No, 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 no. Kuro oh. started charging from back at the base and then just stopped. Uh, the creep wave died and there was nothing near it. Oh. He, he mustn't be wanting to go to, uh, okay, well, there's the, <laughs> your quick switch. Zai, there's a sentry ward right there, triggers off the mana style. They start beating into Luo a little bit. I mean, these spiders, the illusions with Radiance are actually just dealing a lot of damage in Strong. Look yep. at his HP. He's actually got the Viper Strike and the Radiance Burn's gonna kill him. 
Uh, so there's no way to survive this. So just going in deep. And Poppy again with the BKB Aussie, forcing Ferrari back. Luo is being focused down by Artizi inside. Sonic Wave will do some work until Koro just starts bashing, burning around. This is over. There's no way they can win. GG. Team Seek will 2 0 IG after a disappointing start to the group stage where they went 1 1 up against Fnatic. They'll finally claim the full three points for the 2 0 victory over IG. That's the favorite of this tournament, Secrets. Showing their strength, really. Like, there was no chance for IG in game one. There was possibly, I'm not going to say less chance, but there was no chance in second game either. Yeah, it, it felt really hopeless from the start, and uh, everything worked for Secret. We'll have ourselves a break and be back here in a couple of moments' time for 